You're such an asshole. Greetings all, allow me to tell you a story. It's an original, we finally have an original. Gonna be doing a ton of originals here this week. But I have an original and this is well overdue. This was about six months ago. Um, it's when I came out with, I wasn't even attacking, I was trying to assuage or argue or stop uh, women of all people, because you know how much I hate women. I was actually trying to help them with the hashtag, I think it was women with degrees. And if you don't know what this was, <clears throat> this was a big hashtag trend where all the women were graduating with their degrees. And the sad thing was that damn well near 98, I'm not talking 95, not one in 20. I mean, I know, I know my numbers, but <clears throat> less than one in 20. So 97, 98% of these women were celebrating the fact they were graduating with degrees, but they're all worthless, crappy degrees. A good 45, 50% of them were gonna go on to get master's degrees in equally worthless subjects. And every great once in a while, you'd see an engineer or an accountant. But they're all criminal justice, sociology, philosophy, all this just worthless crap. And so I try to be very polite. You know, usually I'm not a polite individual. I try to be very polite, very diplomatic, but very convincing and put forth the argument saying, look, ladies, th th this, this has to end. This, uh, I have a degree and any degree is a good degree has to end because just like the housing bubble, uh, young people are borrowing money they can't afford to pay back and investing it in equally worthless investments. You can't even call it an investment anymore. Uh, the liberal arts and humanities are consumer goods. There's no expectation you're going to make any kind of money on that. But women have been lied to. I'm not, I'm not being conspiratorial. They've been lied to, as have men, but they were lied to, uh, especially in education, K through college about the importance of education and you need to borrow a quarter million dollars to pay me to give you the wisdom because I just care about you so much. So I was trying to expose <clears throat> this fraud and then hopefully save a generation of when you know me pissing into the hurricane. <laughs> oh, there's crazy Clary over in Florida. He's pissing in the hurricane again. And uh, <clears throat> it was well received, but what few uh, years would listen. But uh, doing the video and writing the article, I got a young uh, black gentleman who says, dude, you've got to realize that a lot of these women, and another thing about this hashtag with women with degrees, it, it was presumably started by a black female group because about 75% of them were black females with their, with their degrees. So uh, there was a, a racial component to this. But he was basically saying that you got to realize with black women that a lot of these gals are not really going to school to get the degrees. They are using the student loans for living expenses. That's what it is. They're using it as living expenses. And that kind of got me angry, but he was really angry because he's like, dude, I'm, I'm, he's like, it, it's worse than them just going to get a worthless degree and saying, you know, we're the most educated group in America, blah, blah, blah. They're basically stealing from ultimately the taxpayer because it's the taxpayers that guarantee a lot of these loans. And they have no intention of paying. They're just using it as living expenses because they're too damn lazy to go get a job. So he was very upset. I, I kind of was miffed. I mean, I kind of knew that may be happening, um, but to use that as, your, as a substitute for finding a job, it, it makes you, me, and everybody enraged. Now, additionally, it's not certainly not just relegated to black females. This is, uh, I mean, come on, uh, you look at grad school and the liberal arts, that's chock full of white people, uh, and they certainly have no intention of working a real job in their lives. But to blatantly and... and consciously and knowingly use student loans that you probably have no intention of paying back as living expenses and not to invest in a degree that's going to help you land a job, let alone pay back the freaking taxpayer. That's very enraging to this young gentleman, myself, and anybody else who works jobs and pays taxes. So he wanted me to <clears throat> get back, get revenge, and I, me too, I want to kind of get revenge on these people and do a tirade, a rant against people who use student loans for living expenses. And the problem is, as the more and more I thought about this, the, the type of people that are going to use student loans for living expenses are one of three things or a combination of, or any of these three. That is, they're either dumb, they're lazy, or they're evil or criminal. Right? They, they know full well what they're and they don't care. So when you're dumb, I mean, okay, a lot of that is just dumb. And I understand if you went to the public schools or try to force everybody to go into college, even those who are not qualified or smart enough to be in college, I can see, and teaching college myself, I can see where they're dumb. They're just dumber than, than fuck. 
They sign on the dotted line. They don't care. I'm supposed to go to college. That's what my parents told me. Everybody told me I'm going to college. I'm going to college. Uh, so they can't, They could literally be so dumb. They don't. I mean, what was it? The cynical libertarian society. This gal was getting her master's in English, and she had to ask him, "Is three fourths and two thirds the same thing?" <laughs> Get someone who got a college degree moving on to their masters. So I could see people being spectacularly yet incomprehensibly stupid and not knowing that you shouldn't use student loans for living expenses. Then there are people who are lazy, who I think this was the point of the, the gentleman that was, uh, emailed me and contacted me about this, where they don't want to get a real job. They want, they want the extended adolescence of K through 12 to continue on. They want to just keep living like they're in high school forever. But it's adult high school. We, we have the legal right to do drugs and drink and have sex. And, and so they want to continue this fantasy, but they don't want to work a real job. They're out of the house. And you kind of think about it, it's like the ultimate sophomore, uh, not sophomore as in a high schooler grade, but like a sophomoric individual's dream come true where no responsibility, but 100% the rights of an adult. So you don't have to pay for anything, and it's just the student loans. So they're they're lazy. They don't want to work a real job because they want to keep living in La La Land. They watch too much reality TV and Friends. Uh, and then the third is where they're criminal or evil. And these are people who damn well fully know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. They have no intention of paying their loans back. And they're just thieves. They're just rank thieves. And so when you look at it, whether they're too stupid, too lazy, which I would say also is a bit evil, like, yeah, oh, fuck it, I'm not going to pay it back, I'm too lazy, that's also, but then knowingly doing it, these people, you know, you, you're not going to get through to them. A rant is not going to get them to feel bad about themselves, get them to feel guilty about parasigning off of the taxpayer, get them to have introspection and think about their lives and change and, and, and lessen the amount that we're going to have to bail out these neo-banksters, because that's essentially what they are, these neo-parasites, because they don't care. Either they're incapable, incapable of caring, <clears throat> or they just don't care and they know fully well what they're doing, and they, they view you as a meal ticket. They view themselves as more important than you. They, they, they are truly evil people. So how do you get revenge on these people and make them feel bad? Because it needs to be addressed. <clears throat> we need to shame them somehow. And I found the best way to get evil people or dumb people or people who are just clueless or lazy, they're, just, they're, not, they're, they're, they're seemingly impervious to shame, right? is to just point out the truth. All right? and, and there's six things, six, I came over, I got the notes behind there, six things that are truths about these people that this is not going to solve the problem, but it's going to make those of you who work hard, support these parasites of society, who are going to bail these people out, it's going to make you feel better because this is true. This is what's going to happen to these people. And for those of you who think you're, you're, you're just too clever by half, you think we're not on to your scam or your game there, and you are using your student loans for living expenses because you're too lazy to be an adult and work, yet, let me guess, how many of you are strong, independent women? And that's not just the women, but all you guys are strong, independent people. You're so smart. You're college educated. This is true about you, too. And, and Unless you change, unless you become a self-reliant, self-responsible, self-supporting adult, this is these are true facts about you that's going to happen. One, if you are so dumb, lazy, or evil that you use student loans to pay for living expenses, you are forever going to be poor. Um, I think it was O'Shea Jackson was talking about he knew a doctor and a dean or a judge. Two really you know, more than six figures on both sides. And uh, they were still going bankrupt because they spent more than they made. Now, those are doctors and lawyers. Now, and I understand the temptation of spending, <clears throat> but you guys, you guys who are using your student loans, you're so dumb. You're, so, you're not, you're not even going to, they're not even going to go to become a doctor or a surgeon or a dean or anything. You're just not even going to try. You're just going to, you're, you're not even going to go work at McDonald's or anything. You're just going to coast for what, the next four years? You're so short-sighted and you're so stupid, whether you're evil or not, you are forever going to be poor. Because you, your laziness, your, your, your greed, your, you putting yourself above society, thinking you're better than anybody else, and that the world owes you a living, you will forever be poor.
you will always find a, a try to find you won't find you'll always try to find a, a sneaky way around maybe you'll resort to crime you resort to petty theft you resort to this type of stuff but unless you pull a bernie madoff or some who still got busted or tom petters still got busted you're gonna forever be poor right you're not you're not gonna be rich you're not even gonna be middle you'll be poor because you're just too lazy and people the whole world basically is anti-parasite and they will take every measure, legal or not, to make sure that you don't get their money. But what, but what, what one of the traits is of these people who are so stupid, well, stupid is one of the traits, uh, is, is that laziness. You would rather live in, in poverty and filth than just wake up at fucking 6.30 a.m. every morning, go to a fucking job, have some agency and purpose, and, and get a, collect a check. You, you, you're that, I would almost call it a mental problem you have. But either way, I don't care because I'm happy you're going to be poor. Oh, you can increase taxes, you know, but you guys are so stupid, you'll piss it away. You will piss it away because you are the one with the flaw. It's not society, you are the one with the flaw. All right, number two. <clears throat> These type of people are not good quality and caliber of people. These are low quality, inferior people, even though they think themselves better than the rest of society. And because of this, they're never going to have good friends. Now, I've said this before. The number one thing in life is not your fucking grills or your fucking Air Jordans or going to the most party party club or getting bottle service in Vegas. The number one thing in life is other humans, right? It's not how much money you have. It's not the Ferrari you drive. It's not your clothes. It's other humans. <clears throat> and whether people realize this or not, not millions of people live, billions of people live their lives thinking otherwise. Uh, if you're a low quality caliber person, you are going to attract low quality caliber friends and fleeting. Even the, 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 the thieves hanging out with thieves, the single moms hanging out with single moms, the trailer trash hanging out with trailer trash. You don't see them hanging out with it. I think even Dave Ramsey might have had something like this, like hang out with people that are better than you and, and, and not, not morally better, well, although morally better too, but financially better, educationally better, etc. You will not attract those type of people. You will forever attract people like you or worse because you're crap, you're filth, you're inferior people. You're lazy, you're stupid, and you're evil or criminal. And you'll screw over your friends, you'll, you'll sleep with your best friend's girlfriend, you'll do whatever it is because you're always above everybody else. And you're going to alienate any good people quickly from your life if they even get into it. And the only ones left are going to be the exact same parasites trying to parasite off of you. So that you're never going to... And when you take away good friends, boy, life really doesn't have a lot of meaning after that. Right? There's one thing left. This is the third one, though. There's, there's still some hope. And that is your lover or your spouse. Huh. I wonder if this follows the same rule as friends. Let me see. You cheat on your taxes. You, uh, you don't pay back your student loans. You knowingly loot your student loans living off the taxpayer, you're always looking to live off of people, you're stupid or you're lazy. I wonder what kind of quality characteristics and, and traits of, of lovers and, and spouses you're going to attract. Because you know what? Uh, the single mom of five children from seven different fathers, I know the math is a little complicated, uh, she's not going to attract uh, fucking, what's his name, Tom Brady or an investment banker or a surgeon. I mean, here's I don't know what his wife is like, but I would imagine... Um, Take a look at um, the brain surgeon guy. What's his name? Ran for president. This is not to make it black. He was black, but it, it's just that he came to mind. He's a surgeon. I bet you if you look at his wife, she ain't no dummy. Uh, Bill Gates' wife probably ain't no dummy. Uh, Zuckerberg, maybe, maybe you don't like him, maybe you do it. Politics aside, the man has a very intelligent, caring wife, I'd imagine. Uh, well, I know she's intelligent, the STEM gal and all that, all right? Uh, you are going to earn, not attract, well, you will attract. If you're shit, you will attract flies. You will earn and attract the shit that you begat. Right? You will be, you, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband is going to be the exact same filth or caliber that you come. So you could be platinum. You could be gold. You know, you could just be regular old Joe Copper. At least you got some value. But if you are shit, even shit has value. Shit has value because you can use it to manure things. All right, uh... I'm trying to think of something that's completely worthless. I don't know, but I, I think you guys are into a category of self. You are going to attract other people who think it's okay to use student loans to, as for living expenses. 
And in that cesspool of low quality, inferior humans, that's where you're going to find the love of your life. So you're not going to have a happy romantic love life. You're going to have a misery. You're going to have, again, like your friends, trying to backstab you, divorce, probably has five or six other kids already by three or four different people. That's what you get to choose. And like I said before, I know you may not think it now because you're all worried about getting Cavarishi jeans or whatever the media has told you. Um, you're you're going to be miserable because that not only are humans the number one thing in life, but the person you choose as your lifelong partner is the number one person in your life. All right? Now, because you're stupid and lazy and you're evil and you don't give a shit about other people, why the fuck would you give a shit? I mean, you're already living off the taxpayer, so why don't you spit out some kids? Because you don't care about the taxpayer, you don't care about your spells, you don't care about your kids, so it feels good. So blow a load in there or don't insist the guy wear a condom or don't get an abortion. Because you need, I mean, we all know ladies, like, you know, deep down inside, a lot of you, especially in the trailer parks, in the ghetto, in the barrio, you never really, deep deep down inside, you know you've never done anything. That's why they always want to have the kid. I need a baby because it needs me. It gives me value. Oh, yeah, good. Because that's why you should bring another sentient human being into this world is because you're lonely and a fuck up. Uh, but, but so you feel better. Never mind, you can't provide for this kid. Never mind, you don't know which dad is which. And ah, fucking who cares with the DNA testing? I ain't got no money anyway. Make old men like Cappy and the gentleman that called the problem, this problem before. You don't get, you're, you're filth. You're all filth. And surprise, surprise, trailer trash begets trailer trash. Barrio trash begets barrio trash. And ghetto trash begets ghetto trash. It's like Enoch begat Isaac, Isaac begat Abraham. Please don't give I know that was the reverse way. Don't, don't. No, you fucking church nerds fucking lecture me about that. Uh, but you're just going to have worthless friends, worthless spouses, a plural, notice that. Uh, you don't have to get married, by the way. And you're going to have worthless children. Your family life is going to suck. So all the people in your life are going to suck and be the equal worthless pieces of in inferior shit that you are. You're condemned to this. You're doomed unless you decide to change your mind, adult the fuck up, and stop thinking you're better than everybody else and have the right to be a parasite off of others. That's, that's where you're going. So, you've ruined all the people in your life. The only thing that really matters in, other, in life is other people. You're not going to have any money. So let me think. If I do all that, I, I know. Wow, look, you know what? This is, hey... This has been a real grand time having everything bought and paid for either by your parents or the taxpayers or both from the age of five to the age of 25, living off of your student loans, using those for living expenses. But once you're out of college and there's no more student loans left, you've now ruined everything. Everything. The first third of your life, zero through 25, five through 25, since you've been conscious, uh, was all fun and games. And that's the best. That's the best. You're like Al Bundy, or is it? No, Al Bundy from uh, Married with Children, where his pinnacle achievement was high school. Your best times are over. And from here, it's all downhill because you're a shitty, worthless human being. You're a parasite. You're lazy and you're stupid. You're going to attract all these people. That's going to ruin all the people in your life. So what the hell do you have to look forward to? Your life is guaranteed to be hell. It's guaranteed to be hell. And so when you look in, here's the sixth point. And this is what I want everybody. Don't get angry. This, this, no, this is, you just watch the show. You watch these people. You watch the show. Don't get riled up. There's, they're not, they're not good. They don't, they're not uh, receptive to lectures. They're not receptive to rants. They're not affected by it. But you can just watch them destroy their lives because in the end, when it goes bye-bye, when all is said and done and these people live their life, even if they lived off the government dime and the taxpayer for free all these times, there was no point in these people ever existing. They, they wasted their lives. They had worthless lives. They were genuinely, by the definition of the word, worthless people. And I can't think of a worse fate than to waste your one shot at consciousness on this planet, in this universe, this flash in the pan that you are, you get your one shot at this life and you piss it away, being the type of quality and caliber of person who uses student loans for living expenses. And that's the path they're going down. Now, I'd like them to change, obviously. I think that would be in their best interest, certainly be in my best interest, and all the taxpayers' best interest. I don't think they have the intellectual fortitude. I think they've been too brainwashed by leftist socialist indoctrination at the schools and the colleges. So I think they're, con they're, they're doomed towards this because their egos are too, too big. 
And they've been indicted. Oh, it's always, it's always somebody else's fault. It's always, always somebody else. They're entitled. They're, they deserve it. It's rights. We have rights. All right? In the end, though, and this is for, not this wasn't a client. This was just a, a guy who, who was very angry, and so was I. Be happy you're not these people. Be happy. Celebrate in their misery that is guaranteed to happen. Make fun of them. Mock them. Ridicule them. All right? I, you know, I, mean, I have other things to do, too. I mean, don't, don't make that the purpose of your life. But just when you see them, I mean, look, every, when I see these articles, and this has been going on now for almost a decade, certainly since Occupy Wall Street. Remember that fucking puppeteer idiot who was, who was protesting his student loans at Occupy Wall Street and he got a, a master's in puppetry? I don't know if you remember. Look it up. It's real. It's real. I'm not joking. You got you to gotta savor that like a good steak. You got to savor that like a pot belly's uh, uh, it Italian sandwich. You got to savor that like the movie Die Hard. You have to just take it in and, and be thankful that, yeah, even though those people are costing you an extra like 10, 15, 20% in taxes, in the end, you're not going to live that life. You're not going to waste your life. I mean, you have an infinitely better life than that. That person has ruined their life. They will get theirs in the end. They will. And you can, you can be happy about that also be happy that you're going to have a much better life than they are, even with the handicap of having to carry all these freeloaders through the rest of society. But as an added bonus, as, as sprinkles on the sundae with the, with the ice cream and the whipped cream and the and maraschino cherries, the, the, the icing on the cake is if you can get beyond this psychology of being angry and, and just watch it and enjoy their misery. Watch the people with their masters in puppetry. Watch the miserable feminists with their doctorates in women's studies beg and plead for more money and go on, go on, um, on slut walks. Or, or watch more recently now, they want to do the free the nipple. Watch that. Just, just look, at, look at these miserable people and their lives. Look at how unhappy they are. Look at them, and there's nothing wrong with taking public transportation. I did. But when I'm driving in Minnesota, and I don't know if you knew this, but it gets cold in Minnesota, I look at the guy who's stuck or the gal with her stroller, probably can't see a ring because there is none, with her poor kid. I feel bad for the kid. But I'm like, ha, ha, because she's stuck out in 10 below zero waiting for the bus. Why? Because she done fucked up. That's what she did. She done fucked up. If you have a kid and you're on a bus stop, you have had too many kids. You need to have, especially in Minnesota, I understand if you're like, if, if the public transportation is good, like Chicago, or you're where it's warm, Florida, fine, I understand that. Minnesota, no, you need to have a car before you have children, right? So don't, you know, obviously you don't want to laugh at the kid, the poor kid's going to suffer, uh, but laugh at these people. La no, I'm not, and I'm not saying this to make you feel better. Know that these inferior pieces of fuck have shot themselves in the foot. So while they may be having fun now and living off of the taxpayer dime and their student loans, the student loans, certainly under Trump's administration, are not going to go away. They're going to come out of the gate uh, crippled and handicapped with 50000 on the good end. I've heard of up to $200,000 on the bad end in student loans that will cripple them for decades to come. They like the work ethic or the altruism or the, at least the self-respect for their fellow man to actually understand what it is like to have a work ethic and what it is like to be subservient or humble, thankful, uh, 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 appreciative, um, what's the word, not gracious, gratified. They're, uh, they're very thankful to have an opportunity to work. They, they lack all that, and their lives will be ruined. So, I know it may not solve the problem. It probably won't. You know, people have tuned out long ago, and they're going to continue down that path. That's fine. I don't care. I can I can enjoy the show later. But for your personal understanding, for your zen-like health, for your mental health, for your serenity, your peace, and your calm, don't get worked up about these people. Just understand the path they're going down is going to make their lives pointless, meaningless, and worthless. And there's no worse punishment than that. Anyway, if you guys got questions, you can go to assholeconsulting.com. I do all my consulting there. I got great books. You can go to amazon.com. You can get Bachelor Pad Economics, Worthless, Enjoy to the Decline, Curse of the High IQ, Reconnaissance Man, and Black Man's Got Out of Poverty. Why well, I wrote that many books. Black Man's Got Out of Poverty, available Kindle paperback, and most of them audio. We got the Clary Podcast. You can find that on SoundCloud. And then we have... What else do I do? Oh, I have my blog, captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. Tell friends, tell family, tell enemies, tell loved ones, tell people you're generally indifferent about. Toodles.